Please join me in prayer. Dear Lord, we gather here today in celebration of Colonel Fender's life. He exemplified Christ-like traits in his everyday life, and we ask for grace in learning to live a life that he would have been proud of. May the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and give you peace this day and every day, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. All right, good morning, gentlemen, and good morning to all of our guests in the wings. Uh, today we are gathered for a memorial service for Colonel Dwayne Fender. The purpose of this service, for those of you who don't know, is not to be somber and sad. Uh, the purpose of this service is to represent the personality of Colonel Fender, and if you had any interaction with him, you would know that's not who he was and that's not what he would have wanted. Instead, we're trying to honor his memory and his legacy with one last unified meeting where we will all share memories from the speakers to you all to represent who he was to all of us. So without further ado, we're just gonna jump right in and begin with our first speaker, Brennan Garrison. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Uh, first off, I wanna start by saying that Colonel Fender uh, was a man that stuck by his boys and stuck by the Corps uh, here at Fork Union. Uh, he was a man that was, that was very proud of the Corps, uh, proud of what we do every day, um, and he would go to bat for us any day that he could. Uh, I want to share with you a story um, that Colonel Fender uh, told my parents that my parents share with me. He, um, last year, he was, he was bragging to a member of the staff and faculty uh, about uh, how much, how good of a job I was doing and uh, how I was making an impact here at Fork Union. So he, he was like, oh, you don't believe me? I'll even go show you his room. Well, that, that day I was in the infirmary and uh, <laughs> my room was a complete wreck. Um, so, <laughs> so he goes and shows my room I want to say it was the Admiral, I think, I think it was. <laughs> um, but anyways, my room was a complete disaster. Um, but Colonel Fender knew, he knew me and he knew that uh, this, this couldn't have been, um, this couldn't have been the best of me. So he eventually found out that I was in the infirmary and that I did not clean my room that morning. Uh, We here as a core are our family, and we need to stick to one another, just as Colonel Fender stuck to us. And to the Fender family, we love you, we support you, and we'll keep you all in our prayers through this time. Thank you. Good afternoon, gentlemen. All right, we all know that Colonel Fender had a pretty unique sense of humor. Um, who here has had the wrath of Colonel Fender's humor before? Please raise your hand. Yep, I just should have expected that. Well, I am here to tell you a story of Colonel Fender and him humiliating me one day. So it was, well, one cold Saturday morning, just normal SAT day, and uh, walking to breakfast, and this young lady came and approached me and asked me for directions to the science building for the SAT. And you know, I, like any fork union cadet, I engaged in conversation and <laughs> I showed her the way she needed to go. And uh, Colonel Fender pulled up in his Fender 4 white GMC and stopped. And I guess he saw me because he uh, came over, patted me on the back, squeezed my shoulder, said good morning to me to the young lady and asked her how I was treating her. And I knew something was about to happen. He. Uh, <laughs> He squeezed my shoulder and patted me on the back and winked at me, and I was like, oh, I can only imagine what's next. So then, out of nowhere, he said, uh, hey, uh, Luongo, I got that hemorrhoid cream you asked me to get you. <laughs> and before I knew it, I turned around, and that girl was no longer there. She was gone and inside the building, and Colonel Fenders sat there and smiled and laughed. And 
I just sat there in awe, just was like, sir, why? <laughs> and then uh, earlier this year, I was cleaning my room and found some jar and I looked at it and it was hemorrhoid cleaning wipes. <laughs> and I can only imagine, I'm pretty sure he put them there. I can only imagine. So, Colonel Fender was a man of humor. We all knew it. He was a great man. And we honor him in everything we do. Remember guys, it's never wrong to do right. It's never right to do wrong. I'm going to end this on what some Colonel Fender would always say. It's all good. Thank you. All right, in August, a week before most of you got here, the leaders, so most of the NCOs, all the officers, had to report back a week early. In that time, we had a lot of seminars, a lot of training, a lot of team building exercises, a lot of fun stuff that we did. Throughout it, Colonel Fender, as the Commandant, was teaching the leadership how to lead our peers. I was asked a few days ago, where do we go from here? by one of you. In regards to this whole situation, what's next? Because we're all kind of confused, and I understand that. And although I couldn't give an answer to that cadet at that time, because I didn't know, something came forward to me in memory. I, I can only say that it was the Lord's guidance as to where we go from here that relates to a story from then. So the officers in the room can tell you that leadership training was exhausting. We had long days of PT runs, seminars about how to lead, team building exercises, and although it was a lot of fun, we were physically and mentally exhausted by the fourth or fifth day. Well, one of the themes that kept getting echoed over and over again over the course of the training was Colonel Fender telling us, it doesn't matter how you get the job done, so long as it's within the rules and the job gets done. We heard that on PT runs, we heard that on leadership exercises, and we heard that on team building. Then we found out one day that we were going to be going on a hike. I'm sure some of you who were there remember this hike. Uh, it was, to be said, miserable, but a good learning experience. Uh, to put it into perspective, we were in BDUs with long sleeves. Pretty hot. The heat index was 109 degrees. We weren't looking forward to the hike, but we knew we had a job that we had to get done. So we formed up outside between Charlie and Echo Company right out there, and we got ready to step off. We knew the mountain ahead of us, and we knew that we had to climb it. What we didn't know was what was sprung on us right before we left. The TAC officers came out of the Commandant's department with about a dozen of those massive 24 packs of water and a bunch of these dusty old rucksacks. So they told us that we had to load the water into the rucksacks and carry it with us for hydration. That's a pretty heavy load to have to carry up a mountain. We started by putting all of the water into the rucksacks and trying to get one person at a time to carry one of these packs. Nobody could carry that pack alone. And if they could, they wouldn't have been able to do it for long without getting tired out. So we decided we needed an alternative approach. So you all know those BDU pants have a cargo pocket right here on either side. So all of us took two water bottles for each pot. Well, suddenly those packs were a lot lighter, and we all were taking a little bit of the burden. And as we would drink a bottle to hydrate and get through it, we would take another one from the pack and put it in our pocket. That way, it was pretty manageable for one person to carry the whole backpack. Now, eventually that person would get tired. And that's when we realized that we had to rely on each other to know when that person was going to get tired because we weren't going to admit we were tired. We just had to look at each other and know. Well, when you started to get exhausted, somebody would always manage to get to you and say, let me take the pack. Let me take your burden. Well, we'd slide it off our shoulders, hand it off to them, and they'd take it for another yard or so. Well, we started to get through the day. We were staying hydrated. We were working through the water. And we realized that we were getting the job done. We got to the top of the mountain, and although we were tired, we had finished the task. I was thinking about this the other day as we were going through this situation. We prepared for a mountain trek at the beginning of this year. Nine months long, hard, 
It wasn't going to be fun and it wasn't going to be easy. But we knew the task ahead of us. A week ago, we were told about some pallets of water we were going to need to carry with us. It was a pretty heavy burden for all of us. Our gut instinct was to have a couple of people try and carry the whole thing. That doesn't work. Nobody could bear it alone. And those of us that tried, failed. I've seen it this week, and I hope to see it continue happening. We started to divide the burden of this loss amongst all of us. We started to lighten the load for the ones who wanted to carry it alone. And I'm seeing it still today. We're asking each other if we need to take the burden off and hand it to another person. I need you to keep doing that, guys, because we've still got six months of this mountain ahead of us. It's not going to be easy, and it's not going to be fun. But for Colonel Fender, we have to finish the job. So when you walk around campus, know that you're bearing a little part of the burden in your pocket. And know that because of that, nobody is having to bear it all alone. And keep your eyes out for the ones who are bearing the most of it, and remember that if they're looking tired, you can take it from them. The second thing that Colonel Fender said over the course of this year that I think we all need to remember right now is on gloomy mornings when battalion staff met in the Commandant's department before morning colors, when we were all tired, when it was cold, when it was rainy, he would ask us the question, where else but here? Where else but here can we go out and salute a flag at 7.30 in the morning before we go to class? Where else but here can we get 350 teenage boys to walk outside in the rain to get dining hall eggs? Where else but here? The answer to that question was always nowhere. And although sometimes it seems like these things are bad and they're rough and they're not fun, you need to remember they're unique. And even though sometimes it's not fun, there's always something to be learned from it. And you need to remind yourself every time the going gets tough, where else but here? Nowhere. So I want you to ask yourselves right now, where else but here at Fork Union could we suffer a loss like this and still get up and take an exam? Where else but here at Fork Union could we have teenage boys lean on each other for support through a time like this and bear each other's burden for no other reason than the fact that we are a brotherhood? Nowhere. So remember the uniqueness of this experience and always ask yourself, where else but here? Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, today we honor the memory and legacy of Colonel Fender. We remember his commitment to the Corps, his impeccable sense of humor, and his ability to unite us all and remind us of the burden that we all carry and the fact that we carry it together. Lord, as we go forth from this place, I ask that you would have us all be very cognizant of that memory, that legacy, and that burden. And I ask that you would remind us all to ask, where else but here, as we continue through our lives at Fork Union, and ask us all to keep this burden on our hearts, but to not let it slow us, and instead let it unify us as we finish this trek. I pray all these things in your holy and almighty name. Amen. One last thing, gentlemen, I think that uh, I feel obligated to share with you about Colonel Fender. Every morning after breakfast, I go check in with Colonel Fender to see, you know, how each other were doing, and you know, just say hello. And more often than not, Colonel Fender asks me, you know, why am I here? Okay, what, what, what is my purpose on this earth? And uh, he often made it clear to me that it wasn't about me. Okay, he, he made sure that that whatever I was doing, whatever accomplishment, whatever feats anybody was ever accomplishing it, you, you credit it to somebody else. Set it into Christmas, I think it's very important that we keep that idea in mind. That it's not about you. It's not about me. It's about the person next to you, on your left and to your right. It's the person at home. It's your mom, it's your dad, it's your grandfather, it's your grandmother who's sending you here. Okay? So next time you, know, you think that you want to put your hands in your pockets, you want to pick a fight with somebody, or you want to say no to an officer, think about it. You're not here for you, okay? All right? Just please reflect on that. And I just want to thank the Fender family for letting an amazing man go to school. Amen.
terrible sorcery boss. And uh, we'll make it through together and we'll finish this year strong for him. And okay? we'll carry on his legacy. Thank you so much. And thank you guys for joining that commitment. And we're going to be the best for this school has ever seen. All right.